Ireland now is one of the top 10 investors in the United States economy. And our country stand, stand proudly for liberty and against tyranny. We stand together and oppose Russia's brutal war of aggression in Ukraine. You can clap for that, please. <laughs> Please applaud. Please. Please clap. Did it say please applaud on his cue card? Because he had a big cue card with an Irish flag. And just in case you forgot what he was there for, he's the president of the United States. His brain is dead. He's brain dead. He's a uh, perfectly typical Democrat, I think. Hey, Democrats, what happened? Can you explain to me what happened? Well, happy Monday and uh, welcome. I uh, The cherry blossoms are in bloom in Washington, D.C. My best girl and I, we went down to the cherry blossoms on Saturday. Walked around the tidal basin, did all that stuff, had a nice time. It was a beautiful day. And honestly, it wasn't too crowded. It wasn't nearly as crowded as it has been in years past, I think. People are afraid to come into Washington, D.C. by the millions because they're concerned they'll be shot or carjacked by Democrats who are, are they all criminals, Michael, or just so many of them that, that it really makes a huge difference? Either way, not so many people around the cherry blossoms. We went and saw Stumpy. Stumpy's a very old tree that's a cherry tree that's not in great shape. And uh, turns out they're going to fix the retaining wall down there, and they're gonna, it's going to uh, cost millions of lives and take thousands of years and trillions of dollars. And then it'll be worse than when they started because that's how they do things. But we went down there, and then we I, I, uh, yesterday they said, oh, it peaked on Sunday. We went down on Saturday. We, you know, we were ahead of the peak, uh, but it was good. And they said, oh, no, it's four days early. The peak is four days because of climate change, because of climate change is four days early. I'm like, how do you know, like, four days? That's within the margin of error, I think, kind of on a year. How many years uh, does the peak come four days after? They, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't talk about that, though. Because everything is a lie uh, when the cherry trees peak. Oh, no, they're four days early because of climate change. And then today, I heard that today the temperature in Washington is going to be four degrees below normal, which is global freezing. Here comes an ice age. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to have to get pickaxes and hike, hack away at the ice because of the coming ice age. It's four degrees cooler. It's four days early. Oh, the earth is on fire and we're all going to die soon. The uh, the Democrat Party has a lot of mental issues. One of the major areas of mental issues has to do with the weather. They're pretty crazy about the weather. They elect people who tell them that they'll make the weather better. It'll be 73 degrees every day. A little chilly, a little chilly, I think. 73 degrees every day. for me. And uh, the sun is going to stay out at night. It's going to be daylight 24 hours a day because the Democrats are going to stop the Earth from rotating on its axis and they're going to stop the Earth from rotating around the sun, the great ball of fire in the sky. But never mind that. I had a lot to talk about today because it's a bloodbath out there. It's honestly going to the, going to the cherry blossoms on Saturday. I said it wasn't very crowded, but it was still a bloodbath. It was a bloodbath out there. Everywhere you go in Washington, D.C., a bloodbath. I, I heard, what did I, what did I hear? It's uh, uh, that we had um, an eight-day streak. Is that what it was, an eight-day streak without a murder in Washington, D.C.? And it was so noteworthy because there are a lot of Democrats here and they love murdering people. So that we had, I think that that's what I heard, was an eight-day run without a single homicide. And then that was uh, shattered uh, night before last. Was it night before last? I, I think, and, well, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. So night, day, morning, whatever it was. But uh, Democrats gathered at 7th Street, Northwest in downtown Washington, and uh, the uh, reports were maybe 40 shots fired. Probably had an extended magazine, which the Democrats have prohibited. And uh, well, it shot seven people. The Democrats shot seven people, killing two, and as you might imagine, wounding five, because that's the other part of that equation. But that's okay in the District of Columbia, because at least they've defunded the police and demonized the police. You know how they are. They're anti-police, they're pro-crime, they're pro-criminal. They hire prosecutors that don't prosecute people unless they're police, you know, because the Democrats, very violent party, very, very violent party. So we've got uh, that, just a little update on what's going on in Washington, D.C., because everything uh, everything's coming up roses 
at least at uh, all the graves that the Democrats are providing for. That's what they're singing about. Hillary Clinton, Lynn Manuel Miranda, team up on Broadway fundraiser for Biden. You know, he made that, what's that uh, silly racist play where they dance around and black people pretend to be the founding fathers of the United States of America, slave owners. And, you know, there were black slave owners in the United States of America. They were uh, Democrats. They were Democrats, but never mind that. Yeah, so they got a fundraiser for Biden because it's all a Broadway show. What do you say we put on a show? We can use my dad's barn. And uh, Hillary Clinton, who is just a desperately sad person, but she's still thinking there's an outside chance that she could become president of the United States one of these days. Uh, The Secret Service won't let Hillary Clinton near Joe Biden because she's such an obvious threat. And uh, certainly not when they're near a a, uh, staircase or a ledge of any kind, because Hillary, I mean, shall we start ticking off the people around Hillary that uh, had uh, terrible accidents? Never mind that, but uh, Joe Biden doesn't want to be one of them. He thinks that he's still good to go for another four years as president. Everybody else knows that's not true, but uh, never mind that. Yeah, fundraiser on Broadway. Amazing stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Um, And uh, Joe Biden has promoted some of his top staffers that were involved in uh, the mishandling of highly classified documents. Because when you're a Democrat, uh, being a Democrat means never having to say you're sorry. You can regret things. You can regret, you know, uh, mispronouncing, uh, you know, Lake and Riley's name and call her Lincoln Riley twice. And then when you say you regret saying that to Jonathan Capehart of the Washington Post on MSDNC because it's all a left-wing circle fest in a hot tub, Um, it's the same hot tub that Roman Polanski took that underage girl to at Jack Nicholson's house. That was Jack Nicholson's house, but never mind then. But you uh, mishandled classified documents in the Biden White House, and you get promoted for it because Democrats and the law have a very tenuous relationship no matter where you go. Amazing stuff. Uh, Also, the Washington Post has a typist there who uh, wrote a piece over the weekend, uh, online anyway, that... Kamala Harris should step aside for the good of the country. And, of course, the woman that wrote it is a racist because what other possible explanation? She's a woman. If she were a man, she'd be a misogynist also. But since it's a woman that wrote it, she's only a racist. uh, And she should probably be canceled or something like that. Pretty amazing stuff. Vice President Harris should step aside for the good of the country. The Washington Post. Yes, sir. Uh, Also, NBC fake news. They know they sleep with the administration all over the place. Behind the scenes, NBC News. Biden has grown angry and anxious about re-election effort. I guess they didn't detect that in watching the State of the Union speech. That angry Joe's out there like Abe Simpson pounding the table with a hammer and yelling at the top of his lungs. We were talking about this on my Newsmax program on Friday evening and Say, you know, the last time I saw an old man yelling like that for an hour and a half, he was in a bus stop on my block with a shopping cart. Because Joe Biden is as crazy as a mentally ill homeless man that they've just thrown out on the streets to die, which is the Democrat solution for mental illness in the United States. Either that or to run people for public office, because they do a lot of that too. Wah, wah, wah. And, uh, gosh, all kinds of stuff, economic news and We've got um, now Iran uh, gets billions more dollars. Iran, which is the leading state sponsor of terror on the planet Earth, funding Hamas, which continues to fire rockets and missiles at Israel in the effort to kill Jews, women, children. They hope to kill women and children uh, and amazing stuff. But the, um, the Hamas people, you see, uh, they're going to get, they're going to get more money from Iran because Joe Biden and the Democrats are going to make sure that they extend this these uh, uh, relief on sanctions so they can continue to sell lots of oil, get billions and billions. Uh, Joe Biden has seen to it that Iran gets tens of billions more than they would have had otherwise in order to fund the Houthis in Yemen, firing at ships, sinking ships, attacking U.S. military, two Navy SEALs uh, killed in that conflict. You know, we've got uh, Joe Biden, Mr. Peace. We got war everywhere. Uh, and, and you know, it's it's Donald Trump that is the problem 
married Donald Trump because bloodbath. He said bloodbath on Saturday night at a rally. He's talking about the auto industry uh, experiencing a bloodbath if we go ahead with what Joe Biden is planning on doing, and that is allowing communist China to use child slave labor, working their little fingers to nubs to make electric cars filled with toxins in their batteries that are a hazmat scene if they crash, and make them in Mexico and then send them here and sell them. And that would kill our auto industry because that's one of China's goals, right? They're the number one polluter in the world, by the way, and and they get all the help in the world from the Biden family since they gave millions of dollars to the Biden family, and that's okay with CNN and the New York Times because they're filthy. Um, so we got that going. And, and President Trump used the word bloodbath, and the Democrats are having a sex change over it. It's completely berserk what they're doing. They, uh, they soiled themselves again. The media is lying and lying and lying, and we'll play that for you. Um, and we'll, uh, uh, what President Trump said and what the media is lying on. And Joe Scarborough is such a pants-on-fire, lying, bottomless Pinocchio boy that um, the, he had to pull his own tweet Uh, But he lied about it again this morning because he's a pathological liar. And that's why NBC News pays him millions of dollars a year because that's what they do there. They lie all the time. And shocked NBC News to learn that Joe Biden is angry. He's grown angry and anxious because the State of the Union was not a tip. And all the stories that we've read about Joe Biden cursing out everybody behind the curtains using all the most vulgar words and the world, you know, the, the uh, seven, George Carlin's uh, seven uh, deadly words, and Joe Biden used them all the time, but the media protects him because they're corrupt people. They're personally, ethically, morally, and journalistically corrupt people, and that's why they're award-winning journalists, because the industry is lost and gone. Uh, I hope not forever, but probably, probably forever. Also, they finally got around to evacuating how many people, I think, varying reports, uh, more than 30 from from Haiti, more than 30 people on an airplane evacuated. You can't get into Port-au-Prince because barbecue and the cannibals own the airport at Port-au-Prince. So you have to go to Haiti's second city. Can you imagine living in Haiti's second city? And you know that New York, New York City, <coughs> according to the Democrat mayor of New York City, New York City is the Port-au-Prince of America, which is not really a a claim to fame that you want to have. But Joe Biden's State Department laid on a flight and somewhere between 30 and 47 people, Americans with American passports, were evacuated, but not from Port-au-Prince because we can't get in there because Joe Biden is a coward and a maroon. But never mind that. And it's like, oh, wow, here we are with cannibal and the uh, barbecue and the cannibals have taken over. Finally, we got a couple of dozen people out of Haiti. That reminded me that Joe Biden secretly flew more than 320,000 illegal aliens into the United States from beephole countries, mostly to our south. Uh, But he can't get Americans out of finally like 30, maybe 47 Americans evacuated from Haiti and uh, where things are going very well if you're a cannibal. Uh, But never mind that. So you're going to have to escape and and drive, what is it, five and a half hours to Cap Haitien to get to an American flight, five and a half hours through gang-controlled territory from Port-au-Prince to Cap Haitien. And, uh, you know, more Marines went in there, and we evacuated part of our part of our embassy staff and all that. Oh, and also, did you see the story, probably not, about the Lebanese illegal alien, that is to say an illegal alien from Lebanon who was caught crossing our border, and said he came here, he wants to go to New York to make a bomb, to make a bomb because he's a bomb maker from Lebanon, and he came here illegally. Um, Remember when the FBI director, Christopher Wray, told us recently that they have ISIS affiliates in Mexico moving people into the United States. Why why would that be a problem? Uh, And uh, now we've got a bomb maker. Amazing stuff we've got. And, uh, you know, it's a tick, tick, tick goes the big, big clock, Uh, and uh, just amazing stuff. The war in Gaza, Benjamin Netanyahu responded to the lizard king, Chuck Schumer, in his attacks on Israeli sovereignty, meddling in more elections. 
you know, Schumer, the guy that stood in front of the Supreme Court and screamed that you will reap the whirlwind, Kavanaugh and Gorsuch. And uh, then the armed assassin with the burglary tools and the kidnapping tools showed up outside of Kavanaugh's house. But that's not a problem when you're a Democrat. That's okay. They'll vote for you even more. Uh, Also update out of Georgia and New York, President Trump's cases. Kind of fun. Jonathan Turley on Friday when we got the ruling from the judge in Georgia, you know, with uh, Fannie Willis and her boyfriend, one of you has to go. And Fannie Willis gets to decide which one. So her boyfriend went, but she stays because that's justice in some twisted judge's mind, right? But uh, Jonathan Turley wrote a piece about it, and he seized on the same thing that I did, Tennessee Williams and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, on, uh, on Friday. I was ahead of the curve on that one, I got to say. A uh, crazy, crazy world since Joe Biden took over. And they're not on the side of civilization. They're the left. They're on the side of Hamas. They're helping Russia and Iran and barbecue the cannibal. Lebanese bomb makers flowing across our border. What, me worry? We're at 888-630-9625. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. All right, let's uh, let's go to the telephones. I, I got AOC has turned her district in New York into a third world hellhole run by gangs and prostitutes, which is perfect for her. Let's, uh, and I'll uh, share that with you. Let's go to the phones. Oh, well, look at the time. Look what I've done. Look what I've done. Well, Greg, I think, has a pretty quick point. Calling from Olympia, Washington, Gregory, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning. My quick point is that uh, uh, Trump supporters are smarter and have a better attitude and opinion than Trump haters, because we read the whole book. We know Trump's bad side, and we know his good side. If you ask anybody who hates Trump, they can't think of one of his accomplishments. You ask them about JFK, they know about PT-109, they know about Bay of Pigs, but they don't know anything about Trump. (laughs) We're smarter than they are, and they're trying to tell us that they know everything, and Trump is bad. We know his good side. They don't know anything. Well, uh, you know, they have fallen prey to the propaganda apparatus of the Democrat Party, which, you know, following the, they use the Russian playbook, as uh, has been explained to us by uh, an Obama-Biden administration official. And uh, it's the old Goebbels thing, as uh, Al Sharpton would say. You know, a lie told a thousand times becomes the truth. Did I hear you correctly say that perhaps he was influenced by Gurgle? Could have been Gurgle, might have been influenced by Gurgle. NBC historian, the Reverend Al Charlatan, racist anti-Semite of Tawana Brawley fame. NBC pays him seven figures to be a journalist because, you know, they're kind of funny that way. Those people. Yeah, I do love the uh, AOC district neighborhood labeled as third world as illegal aliens clog the streets and prostitutes overrun every block because Democrats, all your may all your daughters grow up to be street hookers. It's a it's a goal in a Democrat Party family, a Democrat household. Pretty amazing stuff. Yes, it is. I, uh, speaking of, I did mention this, that that uh, Washington, D.C., we were on a pretty good streak there for a minute. You know, last year, 2023, we had the greatest number of homicides, that is to say murders, in Washington, D.C. We're only 61 square miles, uh, plus a little water coverage, but 61 square miles of dirt. And what do we have, Michael? 959 carjackings last year, uh, an all-time record for us and for most other cities. And we had a greater number of homicides last year than we had had in more, more than a quarter of a century. 
more than a quarter of a century. And uh, now the Democrats are saying, hey, look, this year, kind of a slow start to the homicides. The uh, It's lower for the first, you know, two months of 2024 than the first two months of last year. I'm like, well, yeah, but last year was uh, more homicides than we've had in more than a quarter of a century. So uh, aim a little higher, why don't you? But uh, the news media are very excited to announce that we had eight days without a homicide. Isn't that amazing? In Chicago last week, they had one day with nine homicides. Again, the Valentine's Day Massacre, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, I think it was 1927. That was seven people. Now, the other day in Chicago, nine people were murdered in one 24-hour period. News media doesn't even notice it because the Democrats have made that normal, just like looting and arson and street mob violence. But never mind that. Uh, The other night, two killed, five others shot Washington, D.C., shattering our eight-day winning streak of uh, no homicides. Two people were killed, five others injured in a shooting Sunday morning. It was late Saturday night, 3 a.m. Sunday morning. But, uh, you know, they didn't just get out of bed. They had been up all night, you know what I mean? And uh, so two people killed, five others injured a shooting early Sunday morning at 7th and P. 7th and uh, and the cross street is like Peter Street, P Street, because we do that here. We we have streets with uh, letters, you know. And uh, officers responding to reports about 3 a.m. Sunday found two men with gunshot wounds who died at the scene, according to a police news release. The two slain men were identified um, as Anthony Brown, 32, of Southeast D.C., J. Lux, Lux, L-U-C-K-S, 32, of uh, Baltimore. Um, And uh, authorities found four more adults who were shot, transported them to hospitals. A fifth injured adult walked into a hospital with a gunshot wound. You know, here in D.C., you get shot, they just tell you to walk it off, you know, Walk it off. Walk yourself to the hospital, why don't you? Mm-mm-mm. The scene of the shooting near the Kennedy Recreation Center. Police said in a social media post that they were searching for a male assailant. Average build, wearing light pants and a blue shirt. Keep your eyes peeled for that guy. Because the assailant has an average build, which most people do, which is why it's called an average build, wearing light pants and a blue shirt. Now, is that uh, like an Eskimo person? Is that a uh, Swedish-looking person with red hair? What uh, kind? Last seen on foot heading south on 7th Street. Did not release release any additional information on the suspect or a motive. See, if we're a white male, then it would say that. If it's a black male, then the Washington Post, this is the Washington Post I'm reading, they don't say that because that would be racist and... You might find the person, and they don't want that. God knows they don't want that, do they? No, they don't. Womp, womp, womp. You're a Democrat party. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, and I pulled the story from the Chicago Sun-Times from the other day for a little context. Nine dead in 24 hours across Chicago, the Chicago Sun-Times. That's from uh, from last week. And in Chicago, uh, people hardly even notice that. And, and because I was searching for this, I also found, because that was, um, you know, last week. But then you keep looking in Chicago. June 5th, 2023, Chicago shootings this weekend, 46 shot, nine fatally, right? That's 2023, June 5th. Then May 29th, 2022, nine killed, excuse me, one killed, nine wounded in Chicago mass shooting less than 24 hours. And, of course, from October of 2022, the Chicago Sun-Times, 12 killed, 45 wounded in weekend Chicago shootings. This is all what the Democrats have made normal. They've made all this normal. Pretty amazing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. You're a Democrat party. And, and this one amuses me to no end, Time Magazine, cherry blossoms are coming earlier because of climate change. We're talking four days. Now, you think every year going to have a peak bloom on exactly the same date? Is that where she, And if there isn't, then, and, and if it doesn't, the peak bloom, same date every year, then it's got to be climate change. It's the only possible explanation. You know what? The Democrats are going to need more of your money to fix that. 
higher taxes, higher gas prices. Grandma's going to freeze to death because natural gas becomes too expensive. And you got to get rid of your gas stove because these people, I am telling you, uh, uh, uh. Uh, also because the Democrats never stop with the hilarity, uh, Lyft and Uber. Uh, I meant to look up an update on this too. Lyft, you know, Uber uh, and Lyft operating in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Who could imagine Lyft and Uber to cease operations in Minnesota after new minimum wage law? They've uh, the Democrats there. They have nothing but Democrats, and they're really brain damaged. Almost all of them. It's quite remarkable. So they've got a new minimum wage law, and the new minimum wage is fifteen dollars and fifty-seven cents an hour, but it applies specifically to Lyft and Uber because of the Democrats there. And that's not how Lyft and Uber work. Now, who would pay them fifteen fifty-seven an hour to drive in their own car and uh, work a ride-sharing uh, business? You, you know, you're you're a, a kind of a freelance operative, and uh, you have a relationship with Lyft or Uber, and then you go out and you do your own thing, and you work as much as you want to wa- work, and you know the number of hours a day, number of days a week that you want to work, the hours that you want to work. But the Democrats there have said, oh, no, we have a minimum wage requirement, and you must pay Lyft and Uber drivers $15.57 an hour. How do you know whether they're at work or not? Shut up and pay them $15.57 an hour. And Lyft and Uber said, all right, uh, Minneapolis no longer has Lyft and no longer has Uber. And because Lyft and Uber came in and destroyed the cab business, which they've done in Washington, D.C., too, taxi cab business, there are no more taxi cabs when you walk out on the street. And now the Democrats have said, this is a, uh, uh, this is a great idea. Let's make uh, somebody pay Uber drivers fifteen fifty seven an hour. And, um, and then they, Lyft said in a statement that the bill was deeply flawed, deeply flawed, and that the ordinance makes it, uh, makes its operations unsustainable. They like that word sustainable. I don't think they know what it means. But they uh, lefties, they use that word sustainable a lot. Has to do with the weather, I think. Mm -mm -mm. We support a minimum wage, uh, uh, a minimum earning standard for drivers, but it should be done in an honest way that keeps the service affordable for riders. Well, they don't want that. This is just posturing and preening and and all that stuff. But the Democrats, they're, they're, uh, you know, Econ 101 is not something they comprehend very well. Amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Also, we got a big Supreme Court story coming having to do with the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. The First Amendment, I'm in favor of the First Amendment. The Democrats are not. They're not. You can't pray on a football field. They'll take it to the Supreme Court to stop you. That's First Amendment. You can uh, sack and plunder and burn the church of the presidents and overturn police cars, and that's mostly peaceful. That's okay. All right, but uh, let's get to, let's get to President Trump because this was big, big stuff. President Trump, he used a word, and the Democrat Party panicked—a sexual panic, a, a gender dysphoric panic, they had all kinds of crazy panics because he said the word bloodbath. Now, what he's talking about. And he's speaking on on Saturday, and he used the word bloodbath. And then Joe Scarborough posted a photograph at MSDNC of January 6th. Donald Trump's America, he writes. Um, One little dust up for two hours. You guys burned our cities from coast to coast, murdered dozens of people, injured thousands of police, stole untold hundreds of millions, burned and destroyed more than two billion in property. In hundreds and hundreds of riots, everything I just said is easily verified, entirely true. And Joe Scarborough, Donald Trump's America, and he's proud of it, promised another bloodbath if he loses again. That's uh, what Joe Scarborough, and that's what the media is doing with this. Now, President Trump in Ohio, uh, talking about the Chinese making electric cars in Mexico, Joe Biden waving them into the United States uh, so that the American auto industry will be murdered because of Democrat Party mandates to all switch to electric cars, which are toxic death traps. But never mind that. And too expensive for most people, and you don't 
have charging stations everywhere and they're spending trillions of dollars, but whatever. President Trump in Ohio on Saturday where he used the word bloodbath and the Democrat Party all simultaneously soiled their undergarments. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those guys. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Frederick, now, he's as often imprecise. He's obviously talking about Chinese using uh, slave labor, which Democrats love. They love they love slaves in the old days of the party of Jeffers and Davis and slavery, the bullwhip and the tree. Uh, and now they're the party of slave labor in China. Little Uyghur children, with their fingers worn down to nubs, all that stuff. So there it is. And the media instantly went completely crazy. Oh, my God, he's promise, promising a bloodbath. And uh, Politico reaction to Trump's speech. When is a bloodbath not a bloodbath? Defenders of the former president say he was speaking about the plight of the auto industry. That's because that's obviously what he was talking about. And they listened to it, and their brains are not completely dysfunctional. Um, Mika Brzezinski this morning on MSDNC, she's uh, the, uh, the, let me see, the third wife of Joe Scarborough, whose uh, assistant died mysteriously in his office in Florida. Mika Brzezinski, uh, that this is journalism at its most. Before everyone gets triggered and is shocked, because this is a shock opera that we have to unfortunately endure because we're constantly shocked by what he says. But don't let that shock, don't let that trauma let you forget what you're hearing. Well, believe him. Yeah, and it's it's the old uh, you know I I love that they're they're such nitwits they really are. Um, when someone tells you who they are, believe them the first time. I'd like to apply that to the media. Um, you know, Maya Angelou. That that's like supposed to be. Democrats think that that line is genius somehow. Um, we have smarter, more clever lines than that every other day on this radio show. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. That's deep, man. That's deep. Morning joke uh, this morning back at the uh, old Grindstown today. If I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Okay, maybe you can connect that Not what to he the said. auto industry. Maybe you can. Okay. That's what he's but talking again, about. I've never really heard people discuss macroeconomics uh, in terms of bloodbaths. Never heard anybody talk about uh, macroeconomics uh, bloodbath, um, except uh, we talk about things in terms of bloodbath all the time. And the media talks about bloodbaths all the time in, well, uh, every area of politics. Uh, all the stinking, filthy, rotten, dishonest, corrupt time. Politico.com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC. Maddow. Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Be a bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. That's really and tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies as part of the, quote, Hillary drive Clinton's to take over Maricopa County. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. The Columbus bloodbath, Charles Maricopa Blow County. has a new piece for the New York Times Charles entitled Blow. a Biden bloodbath. 2018 midterms, you can bet that they 100% are fearing a slaughter. In fact, yeah. the word bloodbath. Bloodbath and massacre come up frequently. They do. The words uh, bloodbath and massacre come up frequently in the news media. But the liars with their pants on fire, their soiled pants on fire. Oh, no. He used the word bloodbath. Oh, you can say he's talking about the auto industry because he's talking about the auto industry and how you guys are murdering our economy. And you're murdering all these people on the streets and you're carjacking all these people and you're looting all these stores. And oh, there's another fun story today that uh, I look forward to sharing with you. The uh, idiot Democrats are now noticing that most of the places where they're looting 
stores out of business are in neighborhoods where they complain that they live in food deserts and drugstore deserts, and then they root the they loot the grocery stores and the drugstores till they leave. And then they're angry at the companies for leaving because, you know, Democrat brains got that story coming up, too. It looks like he's pulled a Saturday Night Live massacre on a Tuesday night. By the way, Nixon was smart to do it on a weekend. Now, Joe Scarborough is a mentally disturbed person. He's he's almost as angry as Joe Biden. And NBC News has the angry Joe Biden story today. Very angry, old, crusty, the clown kind of guy. But Joe Scarborough this morning, 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, going crazy. President Trump is obviously talking about the auto industry and and Chinese um, slave labor, cars making in Mexico, and then Joe Biden waving them all in uh, and uh, murdering our own automobile industry. Uh, Obviously what he's talking about because those are all the words that he used. And Joe Scarborough this morning having a a mental breakdown of some kind. Obviously, he's talking about a bloodbath for America. It's laid out in the terms of it. And these idiots uh, on Twitter, uh, these idiots uh, on 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 cable news, these idiots on Sunday shows going, well, I have presidents, you know, he was talking only about the auto industry. And this is one more. It's just bull. Let me say that at 615 a.m. It's just bull. He knew what he was doing. We're not stupid. Americans aren't stupid. He was talking about a bloodbath. Sometimes a bloodbath means a bloodbath. And when he finishes by saying, and that's just going to be the least of it, seriously, these people may be stupid. We're not. (laughs) That's I always save the joke for the end. You should really open with the joke. Uh, That's uh, that's pretty demented stuff there. Now, I don't know, can you tick off all the cities that you guys burned um, because St. George Floyd died of heart failure with fentanyl and methamphetamine coursing through his veins while he was resisting arrest yet again for his latest felony? Could, Could you even begin to list all of the cities that you guys burned? Just curious. Well, that's that's bull, man. That's we had to bleep him because he was cursing up a storm there. Uh, stop burning everything, commies. 